Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Happy Saturday. I hope you're all doing very well and having a great start to your weekend. I know that we're living in times of uncertainty and turbulence at the moment. The market is in free fall, the diesel prices are climbing or at least staying very, very high. And to top it all off, hearing things like Texas is about to have driverless trucks in the very near future, it doesn't help at all. So today I want to discuss with you the future of freight. Ready? Let's go! So first things first, let's look at what's happening today and how it may be changing the future of trucking. Of course, first of all, there is a question about what is this market doing to smaller carriers? What do you mean what is the market doing? It's making a carrier salad. It's chopping them up into little pieces, swallowing them whole and never to be seen again. Because of the COVID pandemic and its delayed effect on the market, Carriers, especially new carriers, are filing for bankruptcy at accelerated rates. I'm telling you, our future is doomed. Not necessarily. As I always say, the U.S. economy cannot survive without the transportation industry. So as long as people are buying food or commodities of any sort, the transportation industry will keep rolling on. That being said, it is bound to change and evolve like everything else. So those that can survive the current bloodbath and evolve with the times will be the ones that come out on top in the future. The second thing that's happening is of course these absurd fuel prices. And according to most experts, this is not going to be changing anytime soon. So carriers must be prepared for the fact that fuel will make up a huge percentage of their expenses. And what does that mean? Well, it means that carriers are now super interested in electric vehicles, electric trucks that will save them that fuel cost. Finally, putting those together, the bad rates plus the high fuel costs means that carriers will now try to save money wherever they can. Now, from personal experience, I can tell you that yes, fuel cost is the highest expense on a monthly basis. The second highest expense is payroll, meaning hiring team members. That means that there is now a growing interest in keeping that cost down. And how do you do that? Well, one of the ways is a driverless truck. That's it. We're doomed. Get out while you still have your pants on because the ship is going down. So this brings us to the future of trucking and let's start with electric trucks. I personally am a huge fan of Tesla and Elon Musk is someone I have immense respect for. Elon, if you ever see this, I love you. Yes, I might be one of those crazy super fans, but that's beside the point. I'm sure that by now you've all heard about the Tesla semi truck, which is actually in operation right now. It delivers Tesla cars to customers. But the question question is, is this whole electric semi scalable to a national level? To figure that out, let's look at some specs. Okay, so number one is of course the Tesla semi truck. The range on this truck on a single charge is between 300 to 500 miles and the charge time is a minimum of 120 minutes. Then there's the Freightliner E Cascadia, 250 miles on a single charge and it takes about 90 minutes to get 80% of the charge done. Then there's the Volvo CNR Electric, which gets 275 miles on a single charge and to get Get it to 80% you would need about 90 minutes. Then there's the Kenworth T680E. This baby gets 150 miles on a single charge and it takes about three and a half hours to charge it. Finally there's the Peterbilt 579 EV which gets 150 miles and it can take about three to four hours to charge. First of all range is a big issue. Let's say you have a semi truck that can hold 200 gallons of fuel and you get about six miles per gallon out of that truck. That would mean you have a range of 1,200 miles. Now compare your 1,200 miles to the highest 500 mile range of a Tesla Semi. So what? You can recharge. Okay, recharging issue number one. It takes about 10 to 20 minutes to fill up full tanks on a regular truck. Charging? Well, we already saw that it takes between 90 minutes and four hours to charge an electric truck. And with the current range of those electric trucks, you would have to recharge every few hundred miles. You won't get very far, will you? Now, to top it all off, throw in the hours of service, specifically the 14 hour shift time rule. Once you start the 14 hour clock, you cannot stop it. Now imagine you are charging and you have to waste 90 minutes to four hours of that shift time to charge your truck. Yikes. But of course, the bigger issue is the infrastructure. 
in order to be able to scale those electric trucks to a national level, there should be charging stations everywhere to be able to keep those trucks moving. And that's a big feat. Now, Tesla has been incredible about creating charging stations for its smaller vehicles nationwide. And I believe that Elon Musk will be able to do the same thing for semi trucks. But what is the situation right now? Well, currently there are only two mega chargers intended for Tesla semi trucks, one in Giga Nevada and the second one in Modesto, California, next to Frito Lay. Now that electric trucks are covered, let's talk about the driverless trucks of the future that are coming in the very near future to Texas and actually also to Tennessee because driverless trucks have been just cleared to operate on Tennessee roads. Well guys, we're all losing our jobs. To be completely honest, yes, it scares me that technology is moving at such a fast pace, but I am not afraid of losing this industry to a bunch of robotic trucks yet. Yes, self-driving trucks are a thing and they're about to hit roads in certain areas, but that does not mean that they will be scaled to a national level anytime soon. That being said, I believe that semi-autonomous trucks will take over the market much sooner than fully autonomous trucks. The idea behind ATs or autonomous trucks is to create safety and efficiency. Now, the human factor is twofold. On one hand, we can make small mistakes that can be deadly on the road. We also get tired, which on the road is a recipe for disaster. Robots don't get tired and operate based on an exact science, mathematics and algorithms. The problem is this, these robots will be built by humans, which means they are bound to malfunction once in a while. And a huge dinosaur on the road malfunctioning will cause quite a bit of damage. Now, as I said before, the human factor is twofold. The flip side is that humans don't operate using algorithms and cold logic. We actually know how to think outside the parameters, outside the box, which can be very helpful. So back to my point, I think sooner rather than later, there will be an influx of semi-autonomous trucks where there will be a driver in the cab to take over in case of emergency. Isn't that what pilots do? Yes, exactly. Pilots are not there to operate the plane from start to finish thanks to autopilot, but they are there in case of an emergency situation. Now think about it. Planes are semi-autonomous. There's always a pilot and a co-pilot sitting in the cockpit and they don't face the kinds of conditions that a truck driver or a robotic truck would face on the road. There is no traffic, there is no road rage and there is no unpredictable drivers. So my two cents on the topic, don't worry about losing your job just yet. Your job might change and it might evolve, but you won't need to start looking for a new career because you've just been replaced by a robot. Well, I hope you guys found this video helpful. These were just my opinions and I would actually love to hear what you have to say on the topic. So please feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll see you all in the next video.